In this lesson, we're going to learn how to solve systems of equations using a process known as elimination. In our first examples today, we'll look at some simple systems that work very naturally with the elimination process so that we can get to know how the procedure works. Then we'll look at some problems with increasing difficulty where we have to do a little bit of manipulation in order to allow the elimination process to work. So let's start with a basic example. Suppose we have the system 5x plus 7y equals 29 and negative 5x minus 5y equals negative 15. The elimination method will work well here because the equations are aligned in a particular way. Notice that our x terms are aligned, our y terms are aligned, our equal signs are aligned, and then our constants are aligned. When we have our equations set up this way, we can use elimination. And here's how it works. We simply go through and add the equations together. We have 5x minus 5x, which gives us 0x. 7y minus 5y, which gives us 2y. And 29 minus 15, which equals 14. Notice that we have 0x. We have no x term here at all. This equation is very simple. In fact, it's nothing more than 2y equals 14. This equation is simplistic to solve. Divide both sides by 2, and we find that y equals 7. In our solution, the y value will be 7. We also need to find the value for x. And in order to do that, we'll go back to our original equations. We had two of them, and it doesn't matter which one we use. I'm going to use the first one, but you could use the second one just as easily. We know that y is 7, so we substitute 7 in place of y, and we solve for x. We subtract 49 from both sides, divide both sides by 5, and we find that x is equal to negative 4. In this system of equations, the solution is x equals negative 4 and y equals 7. That can be written as the ordered pair negative 4, comma, 7. Remember what a solution to a system is. A solution is the value of x and y that makes both of the original equations true at the same time. It's also the point where the two lines intersect. If I were to graph both lines given by the original equations, those lines would intersect at the point negative 4, 7. In this example, it was our x terms that added up to 0. Let's take a look at an example where the y terms add to 0. 9x minus 6y equals negative 9, and 9x plus 6y equals 63. We follow the same process, adding the related terms. 9x and 9x is 18x. Negative 6y plus 6y is 0y and negative 9 plus 63 is 54. This time we have no y's. This equation is nothing more than 18x equals 54, which I can solve very simply to find that x equals 3. In the solution to this system of equations, the x value is 3. Now, let's find the y value. We choose one of the original equations. Either one will work. I'll choose the second one. We know that x is 3, so we substitute 3 in place of x, and then we solve for y. When we do that, we find that the y value is 6. So in this system, the solution is x equals 3 and y equals 6, or the ordered pair 3 comma 6. These are the values of x and y that make both equations true at the same time, and similarly, that's the point on the graph where these two lines would intersect. In our next example, we'll see something a little bit different. Again, we have a system of equations where the terms are aligned, and I go through and I add them up. But when I do that, I find that I don't have any term that is zero. I still have two variables, and that's not at all helpful. I'm going to have to do something so that I have opposites. And I notice that the x terms are very close to being opposites, except that they're both negative. If I could make one of them a positive 6x, 
then I would have opposite x's. So what I'm going to do is use the multiplication property of equality to multiply one of the equations by a number, in this case negative 1, that would cause me to have those opposite x values. When I do that, my original equation at the top stays the same, negative 6x plus 5y equals 34. When I multiply the second equation by negative 1, I now have 6x plus 10y equals negative 4, and I now have the opposites that I desire in my x's. When I add them together, I have negative 6x and positive 6x, which is 0x. 5y plus 10y is 15y, and 34 minus 4 is 30. I now have an equation with one variable that's very simple to solve, and when I solve it, I find that y is equal to 2. I now need the corresponding x value. I choose one of the original equations. It doesn't matter which one, so I'll choose the first. We know that y is 2, so we substitute 2 in place of y, and we solve the equation. When we solve that equation, we'll find out what the value of x is in the solution. x equals negative 4. So my solution is the point negative 4 comma 2. These are the values of x and y that will make both of the equations true at the same time. And similarly, that's the point on the graph where the graphs of the two equations intersect. So now that we have a general idea how elimination works, let's start looking at some examples that are a little more complicated. In example 4, we have a system of equations where the x terms are aligned and the y terms are aligned, as are the equal signs and the constants. I notice my x terms are not opposites. They add up to 8x. And my y terms are not opposite either. They add up to 7y. That's not helpful at all. I need to have opposite terms, and this time I can't simply get them by multiplying by negative 1. But I can make my y terms be opposites fairly easily. I have a positive 8y on the top, and on the bottom I have a negative 1y. I can make that into a negative 8y on the bottom by multiplying both sides of the equation by the number 8, and that's allowed by the multiplication property of equality. When I do that, I now have two equations, 2x plus 8y equals 4, and on the bottom, 48x minus 8y equals negative 104. That bottom equation is equivalent to the one on the left. It's simply that original bottom equation with everything multiplied by 8. And now, in my y's, I have those opposites, so now I can add the equations together. 48x plus 2x is 50x. 8y and negative 8y is 0y, so there are no y's left. And 4 minus 100 is negative 100. Now I have a simple equation that I can solve, and I find that x is equal to negative 2. Now that I have the x value, I need the y value to go with it. Choose one of the original equations, whichever one you think will be simpler to work with, and substitute the x value of negative 2 in the equation. Now solve for y. When you do that and you work through that properties, you'll find that y is equal to 1. x is negative 2, y is 1, so the solution is the point negative 2 comma 1. Those are the values of x and y that will make both of the original equations true at the same time, and similarly, that's the point on the graph where the two lines intersect. Now that we've done some examples where we needed to multiply one of the equations by some number, let's take a look at a more challenging example where we have to multiply both equations by a constant in order to get those opposite terms. Let's suppose we have the system 7x plus 8y equals 19 and 3x plus 3y equals 19. 
we notice that the x terms and the y terms are aligned, as are the equal signs and the constants, and we look for those opposites. 7x and 3x are not opposites. 8y and 3y are also not opposites. It's not easy to make a 7 into a 3 or a 3 into a 7, nor is it simplistic to turn an 8 into a 3 or a 3 into an 8. So multiplying one equation by some number isn't going to be particularly helpful. We're going to have to multiply both equations by some number. And there are several ways, several paths that you can take in order to do that. So we're going to choose one of the variables. I'm going to choose x, but you could just as equally choose y. I need to find something to multiply the top equation with and then something to multiply the bottom equation with that will give me opposite x values. If I were to multiply the top equation by 3 and the bottom equation by negative 7, that would give me 21x in the top and negative 21x in the bottom. I'd have those opposite x values that I want. You might wonder why I decided to use negative 7 in the bottom. It's important that one of the x values be negative, and because both of them are positive, one of the numbers that I multiply by will have to be negative in order to give me those opposites. One has to be positive, one has to be negative. With that said, you could just as easily choose negative 3 and positive 7, and the results would be the same. When I multiply my equations together, I have at the top 3 times the original, which gives me 21x plus 24y equals 57. And when I multiply the bottom equation by negative 7, I have negative 21x minus 21y equals 63. Be very careful with your multiplication. This is a place where folks commonly make mistakes, and don't forget to multiply both sides of the equation. Notice now I have those opposite terms with my x's, a positive 21x and a negative 21x, which will add up to 0x, which is exactly what I want. I have 0x's, 3y's, and that's equal to negative 6. Now I go through and solve that equation to find the value of y, y equals negative 2. I now need to find the corresponding x value. I choose one of the original equations, it doesn't matter which one, and I substitute the value I found for y, negative 2, in place of y. Then I solve for x. When I do that, I find that x is equal to 5. The solution to the system is the point 5 comma negative 2. Those are the values of x and y that make both equations true at the same time, and similarly, that's the point where the two graphs would intersect. Now that we have an understanding of how elimination works, let's take a look at two special cases, the case where we have no solution or where we have infinitely many solutions. In exercise 6, we have a system of equations. We decide we want opposite x values, and so we multiply the top equation by 2 on both sides. When we do that, sure enough, we have those opposite x values, and so we go through and add the two equations together. But when I do that, I have 0x's and 0y's equal to negative 2. 0x plus 0y is equal to negative 2, and of course, that's false. When the variables all eliminate, there are no variables left, and the result is false, you have a system that's always false. In other words, there is no solution. You will never find values of x and y that make both equations true at the same time. If we look at the graphs, we see that the lines are parallel. They never intersect, which is also indicative of a system that has no solution. Exercise 7 has a similar problem. We have the system, and we decide that we want opposite x values, so we multiply the top equation by 2 on both sides. When I do that, 
I find that my x values are now opposite, negative 2x and positive 2x. But so are the y's. And when I add them together, I have 0x plus 0y equals 0, or 0 equals 0. That is a true statement, which means that the lines coincide. In other words, if we were to graph this, the lines would be on top of one another. This means that any pair, x and y pair, that makes the first equation true also makes the second equation true. And any xy pair that makes the first equation false also makes the second equation false. There are an infinite number of solutions in this case because any points that make the first equation true will make the second equation true but there are certainly points that will make them both false. If we look at the graph, we see that the two lines are on top of one another. That's indicative of a solution set that is infinite in size. The solution set to this is simply infinitely many solutions. And that's how you solve a system of equations using elimination. Remember, you can learn more about solving systems of equations in Mr. Dory's Algebra Handbook, available at www.dorypublications.com.